his old soul. Yeah. I came up with these sad songs like that. I'm so glad that I'm saved. Is it your life complete? Is it your life so sweet? Saved by His power divine. Saved to be life divine. There is none like Him in the heavens above. With the earth in me. His name is Jesus. That name above every name. And it's at that name that every knee gonna bow. And every tongue gonna confess. And therefore we honor him. We praise him. For he is keeping us alive Jesus is keeping us alive look at spot and tell him I'm still here been through the storm and the rain but I'm still here had some heartaches and some pain but I'm still here I may be broke but I'm still here I may be ugly, but I'm still here. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Looking around today, and some folk who were here last year, not here this year. Many didn't make it, but we're still here to celebrate another. Good Friday. We honor this great pastor, my sister, anointed woman of God. God bless you. Amen. In this great church, I grew up around this church seemingly all of my life. My mother used to play for this church. She used to sing here down through the years. Since I was real little. Not important how long that's been. It's been a long time. So with all of these great preachers, these great preachers, always glad to see it here. Pastor Graves. Amen. This fireball that I'm about to come behind. I'm just so glad we're not competing. We complete to the point. And we just jump on the wave and keep on rolling. Amen. If anybody in an atmosphere like this, if you go to hell, you deserve to go to hell. You got to go on now. Ain't no sense that you go up another further. But this joy, the world can't give to us. words of Jesus on the cross. Father, it's not by my might, it's not by my power, but it's by your spirit. Be glorified even now. In Jesus' name. Amen. The gospel according to the 
people like Prophet John, chapter 19, two verses, verses 25 through 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by him, by standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. The men saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. In our scripture text, Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. This is the third saying of Jesus as he hung on the cross. Crowd has gathered near the cross to watch the goings on. There was a whole lot of goings on. Among that crowd was Mary, the mother of Jesus. When he saw his mother, he established a new relationship. He says to her, woman, behold your son. Now, as we consider this particular statement, it is interesting to note that the first three of Christ's last sayings regarding his love and the needs of others. His love for and the needs of others. The first was a prayer of forgiveness. Father, forgive them. Thinking of his enemies. They were doing what they were doing, but while they were doing, they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> they thought they were doing one thing, but they were really doing an important thing, a necessary thing. The second, a promise of redemption. Today, you will be with me. In paradise. Today you're in one situation that looks bleak. But even in this bleakness, and as a result of the, your faith in the midst of this bleakness today, you will be with me in paradise. The third, a word of provision for his mother. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Thinking of his mother. Jesus was dying. And he was leaving behind his mother. He was despised and rejected. But he did not want her to feel that way too. He wants her to feel love. 
He wants her to feel cared for and be cared for. Who was to take care of her? Who was to see to her needs? In short, Jesus was saying to his mother, woman, I'm leaving you now and I'm not going to be able to take care of you after I'm gone. Woman, there's nothing else I can do for you. Woman, do you see John? John, will you will, 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 will be to you as I was to you. He will be the son you need. He will take care of you. John, do you see your mother? Take care of her after I'm gone. Do for her what I would do if I were still alive. Jesus died as he lived thinking of others. The Lord was dying as the Savior for sinners. He was engaged in the most momentous and the most stupendous undertaking that this earth ever has or ever will witness. Nevertheless, he does not overlook the responsibilities of natural ties. He fails not to make provision for her who, according to the flesh, was his mother. And when he calls her woman and not mother, he said woman. He didn't say mommy. He didn't say mama. He says woman. As it speaks of in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, which is the fulfillment of the promise that is about to be accomplished through his suffering, his bleeding, his dying, and rising again to establish a new relationship with God. A relationship that has been severed because of Adam's disobedience. A relationship could, that, that could not have been restored except Adam left us messed up. That meant everyone born in the world was born with a condemned sign already on them. Everyone who was born into the world was born dead, separated from relationship with God. Come on here. So beware you might be sitting next to a dead person right now. Because if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're already dead. You're already condemned. But Adam disobeyed God and sin and death came upon all men. That we are born in sin and shape in iniquity. She, God himself, went right to work in Genesis 3.15 and promised it that he would undo it. So Jesus is saying to Mary, his mother, woman, speaking prophetically to all who are born in this world without relationship to God. Says, listen here, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one that will do what I would do if I was still living. Yeah. I'm gonna leave one with you. Yeah. And even when Jesus was prepared, he told his disciples who was bewildered, they were upset because he said, I'm going away to prepare a place. And then they felt they felt the, the pain and the stain of separation, but he said, don't let your heart be troubled. I will pray to the Father that he will release another comforter, that he will 
will be with you. He speaks of the fulfillment of the promise. You see, we sing about the power of the cross. Isaiah Watts wrote that hymn that we all know at the cross. At the cross, where I first saw the light. At the burden of my heart, rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And this, that is his desire today. Jesus wants every man, woman, and child to behold the Son. He wants them to look to the cross and his precious blood that was shed. He wants them all to come in faith, believing on him as their personal Savior. He wants everyone to realize that apart from him, there is no hope. Apart from him, there is no way. He is the only way. Somebody said that all roads lead to God. But they lie. But Jesus, who is true, he says, I am the way. except by me. And if we are to be saved, if we are to be reconciled to God, we must come by the way of the cross. If you have never believed in Christ and the finished work of Calvary, Jesus desires you to look upon him today. For today is the day of salvation. And Jesus, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. When I stand at the door of your heart, I'm knocking on the door. I want to come in, but the door is on the inside. And if you open the door of your heart and let Jesus come in, Church. 
Jesus says, I'm going away. But I'm passing the baton to my church. You are the continuation of his mission. You are the amplification of his message. You are the extension of his work. His church is to do what he did when he was here. Amen. Therefore, we are to continue. And the reason why we're still here, because the church is still here. Yes, Lord. We are still here. Yes. If you think it's perilous now, you haven't seen nothing yet because the church is still here. So you fool around and let the church get out of here and you still be here. But he says to the church, I'm leaving you here to do what I can't do. Amen. Do what I did. Come on here. Preach the gospel. Make Jesus new to this generation. Heal the sick. Come on here. Raise those who are spiritually dead. Lift up the, the heads that are hung down. Release the captive. Loose them from their poverty. I'm the next one passing the baton to you. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. I'm no longer here. But I've given the responsibility to you, John. He's not here. Huh? He's still making intercession for us. He's still making intercession. He's still praying for us. And we do what he did. When he was here. And I put my spirit in you. I've given you my power. I've given you my word. And one day I'm going to come back for everybody. Yeah. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. Yeah. And those who are saved and alive are going to be caught up together. To meet the Lord in the air. We will be forever with him. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Thank you. 
His humanity gave voice to what his emotions gave way to yes. while under pressure. Yes. So much like us. Have you ever cried out to God, my God, and you felt like you didn't hear you? Mm -hmm. So you come back around and put a little more emphasis on it. Yes. My God! Then you think you heard that time. And you say, where are you at? Don't you see what I'm going through? If we only knew, yes. we would be honest. But for most of us, we would be honest. Most of us have been there. We've been there. Uh -huh. And if not, we would have been wrong. Amen. I believe that this humanity perhaps we felt the way that God did not conduct that way because God did not conform. Mm -hmm. But do what you do when, you, when the voice of God is what, what do you do when the voice of God is silent? Mm -hmm. What do you feel like when you? All, all the interesting all by yourself. Okay. That's a good time to strip forth your faith and yes. trust in God. Yes. It's not a time to give up, but it's a time to look up. Yeah. I will look to the hills from which comes my help. Because yeah. my help yeah. comes from the Lord. Yeah. This was a time before he comes to the last three phrases yeah. to muster enough strength mm -hmm. to not give up mm -hmm. but to persevere. Yeah. Yeah. But during this holy week, yes. when he compelled us to draw near to God yes. and persevere like never before. Amen. He challenged yes. us to continue to seek God. Yes. And even though we may not hear his voice, yes. we still have his presence mm -hmm. right here with us. Amen. And he's waiting for us to take a stand. Yes. So I encourage you, yes. as I encourage myself, yes. To cry out to God. Yeah. For as we cry out to Him mm -hmm. without reservation, yes. without shame, yes. without concern of the multitude, yes. He who gives us the strength to cry for more, yes. not a cry of defeat, yes. but rather a cry of victory. Yes. For He held on until His mission was finished. Yes. Our tests, trials, and testimony mm -hmm. are to be designed to bring glory to His name. For well, in our crying out to God, we endure our own personal crucifixion. Yes. We recognize that God has not forsaken us. Yes. Therefore, how dare we forget about the Lord yes. when the Lord did not forsake us? Mm -hmm. us. Oh,
district, amen. amen. She is, not only does she serve as a presiding elder, but she wears purple hats, amen. And she also serves as a wonderful first lady to her husband who passed his new Bethlehem church in Amen. And so the fifth word is coming now from, put your hands together, for Reverend Dr. Janet J. Sturdivant.
Jesus suffered, my sisters and brothers, it was no picnic. Mm -hmm. A little pain here or a little pain there, no. Mm -hmm. It was excruciating, yeah. horrendous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus endured this suffering for everyone to include you, yeah. me, uh -huh. and those to come. Yeah. Uh -huh. But as I looked at this word, I asked myself two questions. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, mm -hmm. that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Mm -hmm. I asked myself, what scripture mm -hmm. was fulfilled? And why did it have to be fulfilled? Mm, wow. I know many of you Bible scholars say, what difference does that make? <laughs> well, as I read the passage, Jesus did not say, I thirst, except to fulfill the scripture. Mm -hmm. What scripture? Mm -hmm. Psalm 69, 21. Mm -hmm. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for thirst. Mm -hmm. You see, this scripture is a part of a lot of Old Testament scriptures and prophecies about Jesus that were written to signal the Jewish people who the Messiah, the promised one of God, was when he came forth. There are three points I want to lift up in reference to our thirst, and the first being this. The fulfilling of this scripture was added proof that Jesus is the one. Yes. Amen. We know our scriptures, we know other scriptures that were prophesied that Jesus is the one, like Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Yes. Surely he bore our griefs. Yes. He carried our sorrows. Yes. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Yes. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Right. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him. Of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Let me see if I can break this down as to why the fulfilling of the scripture really matters. Maybe there are those of you right now who are looking and listening for the for for a significant other. And you're looking for God to send them your way. You have signals or signs that will alert you to the fact that he or she is the one. Not your description of the person. Tall, dark, handsome, with six figures. Or maybe a woman built like a Coca-Cola bottle with no stomach because she not had no kids. <laughs> well, the Jewish people wanted to know as well. And the scriptures were to be their sign. For us, it's the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to someone today, letting you know that the Lord will put in your heart who he wills for your life. The one who will love you for better or for worse. He may not be tall, dark, and handsome. He might be short, tall, but sweet. But he's going to love you for better or for worse. The person that will put into your life will do you good and not harm. She may not have a Coca-Cola bottle, but she might be a jug. But the thing about it is, she can cook. She can clean and she can take care of you. The one you can go up with and never look down with, keep moving forward with and not move backward. They needed signs. The scriptures were their signs to show them who Jesus was. We need signs too. Point two. I first was his last expression of agony on the cross. The two words it is finished, and Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit, are both words of victory. I thirst is the last cry of pain. No more suffering. Jesus' season was about to change. A shift was about to occur. We know what it's like when you get to the end of the test, and you know a shift is coming. You know that we Endure the joy in coming in the morning. And you can see the sun peeping through the clouds because the storm is almost. 
And bring it to us as it will not come back away. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is finished. In order for something to be finished, it must have had a beginning. When we finish something like a task, a project, an educational goal, building, or we're tearing down something, or whatever it might be, we like to look back on it and evaluate to see if this is acceptable to us. <coughs> Did I do it right? Did I follow the instructions? Some of y'all might know how you try to put those little things together and you figure I don't need to look at the, uh, the manual. I know how to do it. It's easy. Only to find out when you try to put it together, it falls apart. You got six bolts, they're still there. Uh, oh, I got some witnesses up in here. Is it crooked or is it straight? Is it pleasing to the eye? Is it functional? Is it something that I can be proud of? You remember the story of our creator, how after six days when God had made everything, and when he looked back over it, not only did he say that it was good, he said it was very good. You see, Adam and Eve had already been created by the time he said, it is very good. Can you say that about things that you started? Are the parts and pieces still laying around like a puzzle that's not completed? Or like a Lego project that's still undone? This is the frailty that we have as humans is that we don't always complete what we start. In our text, in St. John 19 and 30, we find this affirmation being spoken by Jesus. That it is finished. When he said it, we can be sure that he spoke the truth. Because he was full of grace and truth, as we find in John chapter 1, verse 14. This statement means that we have to look back further to find the origin of the work that he finished. The first prophecy that sheds light on this is found in Genesis chapter 3.15. But when we look at that chapter itself, we find that it starts with man's failure. The temptation and the fall, the doubting of God's word, the addition to God's word, the contradiction of God's word, the transgression of God's word, and it's the beginning of Earth's second sinful career. Immediate effects of sin were felt, and a new restoration work had to begin. Yeah. First, man's hurt, man on trial. Mm. Uh, he was cross examined by God. Yeah. Then God made an Adamic covenant, uh -huh. and a curse was placed upon Satan, uh -huh. and a curse was placed upon the serpent. Well. But listen to what he said to Satan in the 15th verse. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, yes. and between thy seed and her seed. Yes. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head, in the King James Version, his yes. heel. Yes. Meaning, Christ shall utterly crush and eternally defeat Satan. Yes. Satan was to inflict only temporary suffering on the Messiah. He thought he had. Satan will be finally defeated at the second advent. And at the end of the millennium, at the great white throne church. Yeah, yeah. It is finished, was spoken at the present time, signifying a future event. Yeah. But because it is finished, uh -huh. those who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ can benefit from the present day spiritual blessings. Yeah. Because of the fall of Adam, man had spiritually separated himself from the relationship he had with God. And unless a redemptive plan can be put in place, he is eternally separated and divorced of God. Yeah. But the good news is that God had a plan before the foundation yeah. of the world. Yeah. And anointed his only begotten yeah. son yeah. to be the lamb which 
which was going to take away the sins of the world. This pastoral lamb is the one we hear crying from the cross in his finish. His sinless and spotless blood was required to be offered to God for forgiveness of our sins. As we humans are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Let's look at the book of Colossians in chapter 2, verse 13 and 15. We find these words. It says that you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he, number one, quickened together with him. Hallelujah. Number two, having forgiven you all trespasses. Number three, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over us. Blotted out means that he was a speared out and wiped it away. The, the illusion here is that it was a racing ink, if you will. Amen. And in the Oriental days, they would take the ink and they would put it on burnt ivory if they wanted to clean it up. They had cork and gum water that they used to wet a sponge, but they could blot out certain things so you'd never have another trace of it. Hallelujah. And so when he said it is finished, amen, he was looking not only at the current moment, but he was looking past and he was looking future. Are you in that finished? Have you been finished? Is God finishing you? Is he working on you? He's adding his word. And he that has become a good work for you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm glad one day. That man, he said, Jones, <laughs> you're finished already. I'm watching you while it is done. I didn't know it, but the word says that Jesus said, it is finished. 
Oh my goodness gracious, I don't know about you. My first thought was, what, what, what was finished? What was finished? But I'm glad you asked. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Satan thought he had a plan. He thought that it was a, a, an unrevocable plan. Uh, but the wisdom of God. Amen. That even before the foundation of the world. Amen. He already knew that Adam was going to sin. You see, Adam didn't surprise God. Eve didn't surprise God. But he said, I'm going to do it anyway. But I got a plan. Amen. Yeah, and it's going to require some redemption. So he took Adam and he took Eve and he said, I'm going to clothe you. Amen. Yeah, and cover your nakedness. Hallelujah. And he slew an animal. Hallelujah. And took the coat of the animal and covered their nakedness. That was the plan of redemption. Hallelujah. The representation of Jesus being the Lamb of God. You see, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. Hallelujah. Well, let me move on out the way. I found 16 things that was finished. Hallelujah. You can find this in the same word that I got it from. The fulfillment of all scriptures of the suffering Christ. Number two, the feet of Satan. I don't know about you. But I thank God for this preacher who just reminded us Satan is a loud feet. Hallelujah. Uh, when we find in Genesis 3.15 and when the word went out and said that you shall bruise his head. Hallelujah. If you're going to bruise his head, you got to put your foot on it. And because we were risen to Christ, because we were back
who believe. A way of the endowment of power has been made by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He's blotted out the old covenant and making and sealing of the new. And that's what we are here today for. Because yesterday, on Monday, Thursday, amen, when we look at the historical record, we find that Jesus told his disciples that a new covenant I'm going to make with you. Amen. And this covenant is a covenant of blood. Hallelujah. For telling the only work that he could do for us. And so today, my sisters and brothers, Amen. When Jesus said it is finished, it's not that we're supposed to be sorrowful. It's not that we're supposed to not have any hope. Uh, it's finished. Amen. Because now I'm going to take my seat. Hallelujah. But because it's finished, oh God, have mercy. Reverend Booth's 
conferences, um, retirement, and we happen to be sitting at the table together and met, and we had a connection, amen. I, I just found him to be a gentle giant, amen, praise the Lord, and he is humble, he's a humble servant, a dynamic preacher, he's got a dynamic music ministry, broke his um, church and community singers, amen, with him today, and I believe he's going to come in his own way. Amen. So the seventh word um, and the invitation to discipleship following his preaching, amen, is coming from Pastor Darwin Briggs. Put your hands <laughs>
But there's not a whole lot for me to say. Down at the cross, where my Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Because all of a sudden, you yes. start thinking about yes. some of these old songs. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, I give honor to God. Thank you. Don't worry, I'm going to sing some more. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First, I give honor to God who is the head of my life. To all of these phenomenal and wonderful creatures and dynamic creatures. Yes. 
Why? Because the Bible would tell me that if you walk according to the flesh, then you will fulfill the lust thereof. But if you walk according to the Spirit, Jesus cries out. Verse 47 and 48, the people around were affected by what he said. The centurion saw what was done. Mm, sure, sure. What did he do? Yes. Sure. He began to glorify ah, yes, God. Yes. How yes. many times do we live such that somebody else will see God in our life and glorify God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm almost done. Because I want to point out here what's going on here. As, as Reverend Jones, Evangelist Jones, has said, it's not finished. The work is done. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Right. I ain't got to do nothing else. All the agony is over. All the pain is over. Because when I thirsted, yeah. it was all done. It was done at that point. The last point of agony was over. But now I'm looking in victory. Thank you. 